All right, so what do we have here? We have the uh, Honda Accord 2013, and this is the EXL model. It's um, it's very nice to design. I like the new style. I think um, I think it would it will hold. to the test of time. It's kind of like a classic look. You'll never get bored with it. That's an easy entry. This is how the back looks as far as visibility. I wouldn't say it's better than the Mazda 6. Maybe, maybe a tad better. Because the pillars are a little thinner, thinner. I find that the uh, mirrors are, the side mirrors are definitely better. They're definitely better than the Mazda. They don't have a weird shape. They're they're bigger on the on the end side, as well as the driver side area. So mirrors are definitely better on the Accord. The one thing I did find that, you know what, this will bother a lot of people, is this type of material. It just looks as if it has dust, dust at all times. It just looks dusty. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but as soon as I got in the car, I was going like this. And, uh, yeah, that, that will, I could see this bothering me like, uh, like really serious. For some reason, it just it just feels like it's dirty. The uh, infotainment screen, the eight-inch infotainment screen, is very nice. It's a high-res screen, very bright, very sharp. I like it. The secondary one is a very low-res screen in today's. today's uh, standards it's a it's a low resolution screen and the graphics is just hideous I ugh, ugh. it's just horrible in the front you see the uh, very simple but usable uh, AC control hazard lights is right there smack in the middle very uh, accessible there's a little compartment here, which uh, I, I think the plastic and material is a little cheap. There's a USB port there and an auxiliary, an auxiliary 3.5 millimeter input. And there's also a 12 volt socket type adapter. The heated seats are uh, controlled by these knobs and the cup holders are not obstructed by the hand rest. The uh, inside of the hand rest uh, I think is a little small but it does have a place for coins yay thank you Honda and uh, another 12 volts power outlet. The glove compartment is ampered. It's a slow coming down so it's and there's a way to lock the trunk. On this side, on the left side, there's um, an econ mode. There's the lane departure on and off mode and there's the stability control on and off. Oh. 
Now the nice thing about the fobs in this car is that it has a, has a driver one and a driver two control. So if driver one comes to the car, the seat automatically adjusts to driver one. And if not driver two comes to the car, it adjusts to driver two. Let me also demonstrate the, how the Bluetooth works. So Bluetooth connectivity was really easy. Uh, it, it was really, really easy. So all you have to do is make sure that the source is set to Bluetooth and that the audio is on because if it's off, it's not going to work. So we'll turn it on and then you can just press play. So this car too has about two, three seconds of uh, delay. I wish there was a way to see the actual... folder. Yeah, so about about three seconds of a delay. I don't know how I like this screen. It's uh, it's kind of weird. I don't know. But you know what? The dual screen here is very confusing. I I have to say this is um. This is very confusing. They should have either made one big one and not make them two separate independent ones. Oh, I also wanted to show you how much space I have from the sunroof to the um, to the top there. Uh, there's 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 good space and uh, I can go a little higher here. This is all the way up, but it's uncomfortable to sit like that. All right, so uh, let me um, let me show you how much space there is in the back seat when uh, someone my height sits in the front. So I'm six foot, and I'm gonna go to the back, and we'll see how much space I have. This is way, way better than the um, than the Mazda. Like a lot better than the Mazda. It feels very roomy here. I can even slide a little forward and just relax. And um, yeah, definitely way more space. As far as headroom, um, there's there's good good amount. It works. Now this model comes equipped with uh, back vents for the passengers. Back bus passengers have a cup holder. But unfortunately, and I find it to be a big minus, is the back seat doesn't collapse on itself at a 40-60 uh, split. The entire thing has to come down. And if you have a kid and you're going to Home Depot or whatever and you need something long to put in the car then you can't do it because they're sitting in the back uh, and this is a family car so I'm not sure why they designed it like that also uh, I wanted to show you the front right here Now, as far as plastic goes, this is all hard plastic. Uh, 
hard plastic, soft plastic. So anything above is soft. Now this is plastic here. So they use two types here to save two pennies. This is soft, soft, uh, hard, soft, and hard all the way to the bottom and all the way down. So uh, I would say that the Mazda 6 has more soft touch areas than this car. Let me also now do the uh, sound test. Uh, so at idle, I would say this is at 42, 43. All right, so this is going to be a really bad zero to 60 test, but I only have the power the car for a short time and I don't have an opportunity to try it again so we'll see how it does I'm gonna take the same route okay okay and I'm just gonna floor it a little bit of wheel spin Test out the uh, cruise control. Got to turn it on. So cruise control is on. And we're going to set it. I have to say that um, to my taste, I I'm really not liking these leather seats. They're really, really hard on your, uh, there's like pressure points. And um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about them. Now the thing about this car, as far as road, road noise, is that everything feels hum. And it could be the active noise canceling, but there's no, there's just a general hum, but there's no like wind noise per se. But you can hear, there is a problem with the, um, when it rains, some noise here coming from the side door. That De definitely can get that. This car definitely takes out bumps better than the Mazda 6. It um, it really dampens the um, the bumps. So we have uh, cruise control on, and I want to check the uh, lane departure alert. So what I'm gonna do. I will veer off when I can. I can't in the moment because somebody's passing me. So I will veer off and let's see if it's going to give me the alert. I did it. Let me check it now. Oh yeah, now it works. But the sound was really low. Alright, so let, let me check it now again. With the other side. I don't know, if somebody was sleeping and uh, they were um, nodding off, uh, that this really low volume lane departure warning would not be sufficient. 
so I think I kind of think it's useless uh, because um, you can't use it. This, on the other hand, the one where you um, put your blinker on and it shows you the side, that's kind of cool. But as you can see, there's a big droplet on the screen and it's now covering it up. I also wonder how effective it is in the uh, dark. Yeah, for uh, one thing for sure is that nothing here is very intuitive. I'm, I've tried to find how to um, how to reset the trip, and I just couldn't. I will say that the Mazda 6 is much more fun to drive. You can definitely tell that this is a CVT and how it revs up. And um, as far as being fun to drive, definitely the Mazda 6 is the better car. I have no doubt about it. It's just a nice, nice engine transmission combination you can't this this car doesn't come close to the engine transmission that the uh, Mazda is giving us today but on the other hand um, very nice ride the, the ride is uh, very nicely dampened it has a good zero, zero to 60 and it has a good good pickup in the mid-range I do think there is an issue here with the um, when it rains. Th there's a pronounced ticking noise from this area. Very, very annoying. Uh, people, I've seen people complain on the boards, and uh, it's justifiable. Now, I wish this thing had uh, an adaptive cruise control, at least in the EXL. I know, I think the Touring model has it, but you know what? The car becomes so expensive that I don't I really don't think it's uh, it's worth it as a comparison the Mazda 6 did do better on miles per gallon with uh, this type of driving uh, it's not scientific but uh, it was a big difference it was a four miles per gallon difference and I'm just you know just testing the car and as you can see um, we're at about the same point where the Mazda had 29 miles per gallon or 28. It was much higher than 25. All right, so let me let me conclude my uh, little trip here. What do I think about this car overall? Besides the issue with the uh, raindrops hitting some point there and making a tick tick noise, I think the car is nicely insulated you get uh, good bumps absorption and dampening uh, the engine and the CVT is blah really I and you know what I drive a CVT I drive um, I drive a Nissan Sentra 07 that's a CVT but uh, when you're looking for an Accord you're looking for a little sportier drive and uh, and this engine is supposed to, it has the power it has 180 something horsepower and uh, you can feel that it's powerful but the mating it together with the CVT is just I uh, the the Mazda 6 is so much better that you know that's why that's the thing when you compare it to another car that does it better then this car becomes blah I don't know if um, if I, if I didn't have anything to to compare it to that um, 
that was better and did good on gas mileage, then I would say yes, it's an okay transmission. But eh, it's the CVT sucks. I, I just don't like it. I mean, it's it's okay to just drive and go, but if you're looking for a little fun factor, you're not gonna find it in this car. I do find that the Mazda 6 handled curvy roads better. It felt a little more planted to the road. But uh, this car uh, wasn't far behind. It, uh, it has a good ride. It has a good ride. One more thing I have to say is that I really enjoyed the um, steering wheel on the Mazda 6 and you can tell that the Maybe, maybe I should rephrase it. I'm not crazy about the steering wheel on this car. It feels very slippery and, um, and cheaply made for some reason. I, I don't know why, but that's how I feel. All right, so uh, if you have any questions, I think I got a good feel for this car. So if you have, a, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know in the comment box. Please, please thumb up, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Till next time. Bye. Yeah, it's just not it. I don't know. You just don't get this um, nice... You, you don't get the, um, the upshift and power that you get with with the transmission. There's just, there's no way to get around that.